We call this synergy. There may be an I in Rich and Eisen, but I'm a team player, and I love this show, Mr. Mercedes, that's on uh, Audience Channel tonight at 8 Eastern Time, an AT&T original series based on Stephen King's Warped Mind and David Kelly and Jack Bender bringing it to the small screen. And in this outstanding show is someone who is outstanding in it. Sitting right next to me, Kelly Lynch, good to see you. Good to see you. Congrats on this show. Thank you. You know, I don't how I, it was difficult for me to get to sleep after seeing the first episode. What is it like acting yeah. in it? You you play the mom of Mr. Mercedes himself, yeah. and you have some issues. <laughs> there's, I have a there's well, some issues. she's agoraphobic and alcoholic, um, uh, and she has a very strange, um, somewhat incestuous relationship with her son. <laughs> Didn't the, the, uh, you just, could drop the somewhat. I just sort I mean, of yeah, somewhat, you see how uh, I just sort of like put sort of that yeah, yeah. like. And there's that. Then there's um, yeah, really glad I don't have a boy. Just saying. Yeah. I helped a little bit like that much. Yes. But, um, and the, the amazing Harry Treadway. Just we we just went for it. You know, um, there are these people in the world and her boundaries are really uh, sort of nebulous. And she's not quite sure who she is or what she is to him. She's a mother sometimes and she loves him very dearly. Mm -hmm. And he's one of those kids who's a little bit off and she feels like she's just trying to fill that space in some way for him. He doesn't have many friends, mm -hmm. but she's, you know, basically sitting with a tumbler of vodka and a reality TV show going, you know, day and night. <laughs> so she's not really that focused in a way. So what was it like meeting Stephen King? Is he as warped in person when you, you chat with him? It was um, Amazing. It has to be. It was amazing. I'm a huge Stephen King fan. Me too. You know, I'm a huge fan. So it was just, I just felt like just doing like the list of all the, the you know, and watch him go like, whatever, you know, but like, <laughs> Carrie, you know. Um, but yeah, he's extremely tall. Mm -hmm. So as a, as a tall person myself, I felt very demure, which was great. I like that. Um, Stephen, that's not, Stephen King doesn't usually make people feel that way. He doesn't so usually, but I neat. felt a very, very, very demure, good. very feminine. Yeah. And um, I almost, I almost like ran into him. Um, oh my God, Stephen King, mm -hmm. I'm Deb Hartsfield. And he's like, I know, I know. I, <laughs> you fanboyed him. Yeah, that's I know. great. And I'm like, how are we doing? How is it? Is it good? Do you like it? He goes, I've seen the first four episodes. They're amazing. I wouldn't be here unless I loved it. And then he did a cameo that day that we all watched. He did a little cameo on the show, which is- I have not seen that yet. No, it's coming up. Okay. And it's super funny and really Tell cool. me he plays like a school principal or, or, or somebody who has no moral problems whatsoever. Well, he has problems. You'll see what his problems are. <laughs> okay. uh, you'll see. He, he has major problems in his little cameo. But... Yeah, The Shining for me, really, that's, that's it. I mean, yeah. The Shining, and obviously, you know, it as well. It's I mean, that's the, yeah. I mean, I read it. I read it all. Yeah, the and stand. The stand. The stand. That's great. And now, Mr. Mercedes, right here on on uh, on audience. So you are from Kelly Lynch. You are from Minnesota, I correct? Am from Minnesota. Okay, so yeah. Do you, <laughs> did you ever have that accent? Oh What's yeah. It? When I first moved to New York, people <laughs> were like saying, "Say coat, coat, snow." <laughs> like what? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And my, my mother, after watching Fargo, she called me up and she said, Cal, did you see Fargo? <laughs> I said, yeah. <laughs> What'd you think? Did you think it was funny, like the wood chipper dealie? Did you yeah. like that? And I said, well, I thought it was pretty funny. You know? <laughs> okay, well, I, I guess I just didn't get it, but people back home don't talk like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? And then uh, did you grow up uh, a Vikings fan? Are you still oh, yeah. involved? Big Vikings okay. fan. Okay. I'm not as, I can't say it on this show. You can I'd rather them. play football than watch football until the end of seasons. I don't okay. know. I don't. So what position are you? You, you throw like it? To, you can't. I just like to toss a football with the old husband in the backyard kind of thing and drive okay. our dog nuts. But I like waiting till in all sports that aren't because I'm a jock and I like to play things, you okay. know. So I like watching when the heat is really on towards the end of seasons. And I'm, I kind of keep up to everything, you mm -hmm. know, with what's going on. And then I tune in towards the end. Um, but I, I grew up with. The friend Tarkin and Vikings coming to my family's restaurant. Hold on a second. Okay, let's let's stop there. Yeah. So you have your family owned a restaurant. Family owned a restaurant called the, called the Boulevard Cafe. Okay. Man, I was hoping it was called the Roadhouse, but we'll get. To I know, that right? Okay. That's another. I know. Okay, that's. Um, we could put a pin in that for you. <laughs> just hang on. Right. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, and they would they would just come and it was one of those places. Well, now every place in America seems like you can get like a f plate of food like this, but mm -hmm. it was one of those places that you could get you know big steak and a big baked potato and nice big salad and mm -hmm. all this stuff. And it was a really cool you know place. And uh, the North Stars were always there. The Vikings were there. The North Stars, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. That's that's mm -hmm. great. So, but Fran Tarkenton would just walk through the door and you. Would, yeah. 
And, and I remember your family establishment. Yeah, I remember thinking, you know, he's he's. I said to my mom once, he's like, a, he's not so tall. I know. You know, he's not such a huge. And she goes, yeah, but look what he does. Right. My mom was a, you know, just a huge football fan as well. So that was kind of cool. Right. But that, and I guess that's why he wasn't technically a purple people eater like the other guys who were yeah. big enough to come in and, and actually he had eat like, your establishment finished up. Here. Yeah. So that was that's pretty neat. Grew up around <clears throat> the Vikings and the yeah. North Stars and having mm -hmm. it right there. Uh, Kelly Lynch here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. OK, uh, let's get into uh, some of your your history. How did you get involved with Drugstore Cowboy? I love that movie. Isn't that a great movie. Um, it really is. It's still resonant today, yeah, you know, for really sure. Is. It really is, it's especially now with, you know, uh, the, the amount of pharmaceutical drug addiction that we're, that we're living with, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's just, it's a it's an epidemic and it's a, it's a, a sad nightmare. Um, well, I saw the, the spine of Drugstore Cowboy at my agent's office and I was like, wow, that looks, what is that? That's mm -hmm. a great title. And she said, oh, come on, they, they want like Patti Smith, it's a druggy thing and, you know, they want Patti Smith and, and Bob Dylan to do this. And I thought, oh, that's gonna happen. You know, that was the original. That was the original idea tandem? concept. Those two people, d okay. Okay. And down to me and Matt Dillon, and w w you know, um, but I read it and fell in love with the script. It was so beautifully written. And then I watched a 20-minute short that um, Gus Van Zant had done, which is the only thing he had he had directed before. And I, I thought I will do anything to get in this movie, anything. Mm -hmm. And so they were, you know, worried about. I was pretty, you know, a young girl and. Um, I stayed up the night before my meeting with with um, Gus and looked so bad that he he was like kind of after my audition he said that was really good but are you okay like I was just so I mean the, my hair the bags under my eyes it was it was kind of like yeah, but isn't that part of part and parcel yeah of, part you're not of the supposed deal to be walking in like you're airbrushed <laughs> yeah he for was drugstore like, cowboy yeah right but um yeah I hadn't gotten any sleep the night before I met him so I was well, I think good. I was a little raw perhaps but okay. um but yeah I I I, uh, I got the part in the room and. Gus said, okay, so you're going to, you know, be Diane. And I remember the, the producers were like, well, Gus, you haven't met anybody else. And there, you know, there's a lot of people we should meet. And she was great. But, and he said, no, I want her, you know, and that was such an amazing thing as a young actor to have, it was my second movie or something mm -hmm. to have. And, the, and the real, really the first movie where people could see that I could act, which was important. I mean, I think in cocktail, people could see I, I looked all right in a bikini, but <laughs> I'm not sure that the acting was really front and center in that no, movie. No, but I mean... Right. And in Roadhouse, yes. you could see that I could, you know, like, pick, I don't know, staple some wounds. You could staple, right, right. I could staple. And and how pain doesn't hurt. Pain doesn't hurt, except when you I know. staple people, I want to say that it probably did hurt. Exactly. But so so Roadhouse came before Drugstore Cowboy or Roadhouse after? Roadhouse came... Right before Drugstore Cowboy. Okay. Like, literally, I wrapped Roadhouse and went right into Drugstore Cowboy. It was, like, such a funny... Were those in the movie theater at the same time? Pretty much, yeah. So it one minute, like, you're in Gus Van Zandt, another yeah. one... Two completely different fan sets, <laughs> although I do have <laughs> the ironic sick. Roadhouse yeah. people who love Roadhouse for the, you know, for the fun of it that are also Drugstore Cowboy fans, but they're usually different groups of people. Right. But I, I like the crossover fans the best. How? What was it like on the set of Roadhouse? It was fantastic. I mean, it was one of the best times I've ever had. First of all, I mean, Sam Elliott and Patrick Swayze. Oh my For God. nothing like the Patrick Swayze who is the nicest guy the on nicest. planet Earth. Like he the sweetest, nicest guy. Everybody loved him. He was super funny. And you know, how many guys are ballerinas and quarterbacks you it's know, true. played football? Because I mean, he was know. he was Mr. Dirty Dancing already by yeah. the time that oh, yeah. he stepped on the yeah, set of he Roadhouse. Was. And you know, just a, a really great athlete and, and you know he kind of inspired me when I did Charlie's Angels. He did all of his own stunts and Cameron Diaz and I did all of our stunts except for one drop from a bell tower that they wouldn't let mm -hmm. us do, but we were like determined to do everything and I watched Patrick work so carefully on his all of his stunts and everything and it was it made it fun that part of the fun of the movie is knowing that that's Patrick fighting as you know mm -hmm. uh, Marshall Teague as well as opposed to two stunt guys sure Kelly Lynch here on the Rich Eisen show and so it's on Roadhouse is on probably right now it is on somewhere right now. in like somewhere, Bucharest right? somewhere in the world Roadhouse is playing uh, yes, everywhere, somewhere. Is it true the Murray brothers call your husband every time it's on or they see it every time it's on? Is that a true story? That is a true story. Can you explain this, the genesis of this story and um, how I, often it happens? Well, it started with Bill Murray. Uh, I think Bill was had never really seen Roadhouse all the way through and watched it one day years and years ago and came to the love scene. And basically what it was that upset him was that I was getting thrown against what looks like a very um, painful rock wall. Mm -hmm. And he thought it was hilarious, 
<laughs> exactly. That, and quite honestly, I did have quite a bit of padding behind me. I just okay. want to tell that to the fans. Yeah. I did. No, no blood was shed. But yeah, I am kind of hitting that wall, and, and it, it does look painful. So he, he thought he should call my husband up, and he disguised his voice, which never works, because you can tell it's Bill Murray. <laughs> and he was like, uh, Patrick's, hey, Patrick's Swayze is doing something with your wife on a, a rocky wall. You better <laughs> might want to turn your TV on. <laughs> it was like, you know, so it was, we thought it was like a one-off. It was pretty funny. Yeah. And then it, it came to a time where we, he, he was like in Russia. And so the time difference was a little upsetting in L.A. He calls my husband to say again, and then... All of a sudden, his brothers started calling. Like and Brian Doyle, Mark? Yeah. Uh -huh. There's about 30,000 Murray brothers. I know, I was about to say. He's... And there's a nun. So far, she hasn't gotten involved, but <laughs> I don't know if she has a TV. So Bill Murray's but... sitting in Russia, turns yeah. his television on. And there I am. Roadhouse is on. Roadhouse is on. And he's still keeping yeah. this tradition going. Yeah, he is. He's doing it. And I, in fact, I'm watching Anthony Bourdain, who I love. I'm watching his show, and mm -hmm. he's in Charleston, and Bill Murray's on the show. And they talk about it on things. <laughs> it's like... My God! While eating like frogs' legs or something like something that. Something like that. Or, yeah. Look good, whatever they're eating. But. Mm -hmm. Damn. Yeah. And now here comes Mr. Mercedes, which is great. Again, I, I, congrats on that. Thank you. And we're so pleased. I mean, you read, you know, you read a script and you you get together and you shoot something and you, it just felt like, everything I thought this could be, it, it was and better because I'm, you know, my storyline is with one group of, you know, a small group of people. I'm, I'm this kind of sheltered, mm -hmm. screwed up woman. <laughs> but, but seeing every all you know all the characters and everything I've seen quite a few of the episodes now I'm just so proud of it and the, the reviews have been amazing and people are understanding what we're trying mm. to what we're trying to say which is you know it's about the monsters within us it's not the you, Stephen King supernatural Stephen King he wanted to he wanted to do this kind of hard boiled detective show and had an idea about how to bring a detective back into the world who's retired. Um, and it's Brennan just, Gleason, who's phenomenal. He's amazing. I mean, just working with him every time I get on set, because, you know, I'm, I'm Kelly Lynch, I'm Irish. <laughs> I like dropping to Molly Shannon, the Irish. Yeah. You know, it's just yeah. Brendan Gleason. He's just, you know, he's an international treasure. He is that. He is that. What yeah. do your actual kids think of this mother you're portraying? How, how many kids do you have? I have one. Have and one she's, kid. you know, she's, a, she's an actor as well. She was just on Twin Peaks. Um, but she, she basically nice. is an animator. She, she works at uh, DreamWorks and they're rebooting She-Ra, which is very cool. Okay. And, uh, empowered young princess of power. Um, but she, she knows how much I like complicated, multi-layered characters. And the fact that this is an incestuous mother just makes her crack up, you know. <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> That's good. You know, it's a, t a, a tricky one. But yeah. I love being thrown. I mean, I, was, I played a dude on The L Word. You know, I played a, a transgendered character on the L word opposite Pam Greer, goddess Pam Greer. That's right. That was the toughest job I've ever had as far as I was like so worried they were going to make me look like Clint Howard and I wouldn't be handsome. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really. Clint is in everything. Clint wow. is in everything. And, you know, good, for, good, good look for a comedy, way, but not when you're trying Clint to Howard romance ugly? Pam Greer. Yeah, no, right. Exactly. I, mean, I know. Yeah, Clint Howard, <clears throat> look, I mean. He's anybody. He's Ron's. He's Ron's brother. He's, he's in every Brad single Pitt. one. He's we'll, we'll in every single that. one. Of Ron. I wish what, I was Ron's brother. What is, <laughs> what is your before before uh, I let you go? What is your remote drop movie when you're because Roadhouse is that for so many people? Yeah, that it come across. It doesn't matter where they are. They just drop it. What is what is yours? Big Lebowski or Caddyshack? They're kind of I. Uh, oh, fantastic. <sighs> By the way, yeah. Ben Gazzara, who was mm -hmm. the bad guy in Roadhouse, was yes. that in in the Big Lebowski? Exactly. He just passed away too. I know. He was amazing. So the Big Lebowski, which is stupid. It's, it's a long one, too. It's another Coen Brothers movie. I love it. I love the Coen Brothers Or the so Caddyshack. Much. Minnesota Coen Brothers. Minnesota Caddyshack. See, this, now this is what you should do, is that you should call, you should have your husband call Bill Murray mm -hmm. every time Caddyshack is on. That's a good idea. See how That's he likes really it. That's a really good idea. Yes, yeah, see on. how he, exactly. Like Case of his own medicine. You've never thought of that? No. Did I just give you a great idea? Yes. But, I am one of the only people that has a... Real phone number to Bill Murray. Everyone else has an 800 number. Oh, yeah. You, know. you have that real number. I have the real number. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not that he answers the phone. Let's call him Ever. right now. I was about to say. Well, Never. let's call him right now. No, he doesn't. He doesn't even. He he'll answer a text occasionally, but okay. But if I text certain things, like maybe about a cute girl, then all of a sudden there might be a, a quicker response. Okay.
Yeah. So you know, you know how, how to it. press the buttons. I'm just saying, next time the Caddyshack's on, your husband should just return Thank you the favor. For that. You are welcome. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. <laughs> Kelly Lynch, at Kelly Lynch on Twitter, uh, to follow Kelly Lynch and absolutely have to follow uh, Mr. Mercedes, which is on audience tonight at 8 Eastern Time, a clip for the television audience when we come back. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on radio stations across the country and audience. If you like that video, be sure to download our app, and I'll be sure to move Week 6 games to Saturday for that wedding you have to go to.